So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects, an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. consecutive week of cinema psyops i'm your host court the guy that can prove to you that one fucking power chord is all you need to play a song to intro your podcast and my co-host joining me all the way across the city of omaha and wondering what the fuck i'm talking about is matt yeah, what the fuck did you do <laughs> that theme song is one power chord played that's several cool. different ways now that's fancy <laughs> that's that's nice that is the exact opposite of fancy it's just a way to show you that you can, in fact, play only one chord and make it fucking rock. <laughs> Why not? Uh, yeah, that's well done, though. Yeah, that's all, that's all me. All of that music is me. I don't know if I've told you that or I mentioned that. I played everything but the drums. The drums was like an automatic uh, virtual yeah. reality drummer thing that just follows along with what you're playing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I tried to get uh, Darren to 
do the drumming, but um, his child fell ill. I gave him zero time to do it in and demand oh, yeah. to turn around like a true fucking diva. And like he tried to accommodate <laughs> me like the wonderful person that he actually is, but he was unable to do so. So I had to go with the VR drummer. So I was going to try and see if maybe we could get Darren to do the drumming for it. But I'm kind of also done trying to tw- tinker with the theme song and I'll just start working on other stuff with Darren for fun. I think I think it sounds good. Yeah, it's done. It's fucking done. That version yeah. that you just heard tonight is the final version. The one version you heard last week was the the only time anybody's ever really going to hear that because I'm too fucking lazy to go back and fix it is the first episode of year seven that that version will always be the sort of rush. Just get it done. Don't level it. Throw on some effects. Hope everything is OK version. And then I played that for you last week, Matt. And then this week is the final version. I'm done. I'm, I don't want to fuck with it anymore. Yeah, I got you. Much well, like- I think you did a great job. Now, if everybody is wondering why Bat- Matt is uh, extra fucking echoey right now, um, it's because he can't stop talking about this. But you are doing what now? I bought a home bar, so I'm redoing my entire basement. And the first thing I did was, and it needed it, uh, I had not cleaned out my basement in a while. Or my basement rug, at least. So I uh, have, you know, uh, I, I moved everything out of my basement. So it was just an empty room. And, uh, proceeded to, um, uh, shop vac, power vac, the, the basement carpet, all that. But it's a empty room right now. It's only just a desk and my laptop and my microphone. And that's it. Which is why every time he talks, you hear the booming around the room. This is what Matt sounds like, everyone, when yeah, you don't have soundproofing in a room, even if it's underground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, and it's a weird spot. My, my computer's not even in the same spot it was in before. So <laughs> well, that's what it is. Yeah. Well, it's whatever. I'm going to be working on bringing you back into the studio soon. Anyway, I just yeah. have to build an isolation booth to keep you the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I so like I having mean, you in a separate room, even if it's a room where I can see you through a small porthole. It's fine. That seems, I don't know, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean it to be mean. So I'm glad oh, you're taking okay. it. Okay. Well, then, way. yeah. Then I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Why am I bullying you? Because this week we're talking about a film that is so very clearly influenced very heavily by Carrie. Oh my God. You think? (laughs) Yes. But also at the same time runs with it in a way that I, I just have to applaud. Uh, I had seen the trailer for Jennifer from 1978, uh, either on a compilation of some other trailers or it just was like on a YouTube playlist or somehow this trailer fell into my life and it's, I, I found it again. It's like the TV spot for coming a track. Yeah. type trailer that that snagged me and i found that and i'm going to play the audio for the trailer for for jennifer and i just knew that i had to see this film we had to, we had to watch jennifer again yeah no no like i well, not, you had to watch jennifer again no i'd never seen it before i just saw the trailer oh, okay yeah i thought you'd seen it no that's what i'm telling you all i've ever seen of this before watching it for the show was the trailer and i'm like we have to talk about this movie on this show this is like abby the black exorcist basically yeah oh like, my god like only for Carrie and somehow they got away with it and it's beautiful and I have to applaud their brazen lifting and um, changing of the storyline and pushing it so close but making it just different enough to where it it would really be a bad court battle to try and pull off. I mean my hat's off to you. That's so fucking brazen. I love it. (laughs) Yeah, no shit. I mean, watching it, you're just like, okay, so <laughs> this is this is a really weird thing, and I'm just gonna come right out and say it. In spite of that, I was fully expecting this to be one of those ones where we're like, wow, this is shameless, like really digging yeah. into it. But I ended up like really enjoying the film and liking what it is that they were delivering on I it. I got I got into it. Yeah. How about that? I got way into it. Yeah. I mean, they suckered me in and they drew me in for a lot of parts of the film. So I'm actually really into the idea of talking about this film because yeah. this is also a uh, sort of a Christian scare film because it's like, don't mess with the chosen of the Lord Christ. Otherwise, the snakes will be coming for you. Yeah. Maybe just, you know, don't bully kids. And, you know, shit won't happen to you. Well, that's that's the simplest solution is do not fuck around if you are not willing to find out. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you want to find out, I guess you go ahead and you fuck around. But I wouldn't suggest it. Yeah, because once one starts to fuck around, they will find out. Yes, they will find out. And then it's real. <laughs> shit gets real. Then it's real. Then it's on. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit's about to get really real. We're going to talk about Jennifer right after this. Right. This will keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. 
You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. So if you are listening on the Patreon for the Pirate Radio Edit, you are just jamming out to Snakes of Christ by Danzig, which I thought was extremely fitting for the movie that we were going to be talking about. Yeah. If you are listening on the main feed, you are rocking out to some kick-ass fucking disco-style music that I found that was royalty-free, and I'm sorry. That's just how I got to do it. If you don't want to hear that kind of stuff and you think that Danzig Snakes of Christ is more your jam, you might want to just check out Legion's Patreon and do what you got to do to get on the subscription for the Patreon feed, because it's worth it. I'm worth it here. I I promise you yeah we're, we're totally worth it uh, my my parents totally believe I'm, I'm worth something and don't at all believe that i'm worthless <laughs> they, they bought it <laughs> i don't know but the only thing i find anywhere of value on this show is this trailer <laughs> jennifer is a loving daughter you get all A's now i will papa a hard worker you're the nicest girl in the whole class and you're worth 20 of those spoiled rich kids an a student but the rich kids don't like her. That hillbilly smells, my dear. <laughs> They're doing bad things to her. Hey, Jennifer. <laughs> Please give me back my clothes. They're trying to get rid of her. I really don't think you belong here, Jennifer. When you was a little gal, Jenny, you used to feed them yourself. Please, Papa, forget them. A knowledge she doesn't want to believe. All of the congregation, even the old folks, was amazed at your power. It was wrong. You know it was wrong. And a power she doesn't want to use. <laughs> but they just won't leave her alone. <laughs> and now they've made her mad. Jennifer. She's a holy terror. Don't right. make me angry. You won't <laughs> like me when I'm angry. All right, so that trailer that you are hearing right now, that audio that I had just played, that is specifically the whole entire reason why I purchased the Blu-ray uh, on sale. Let's let's be honest. It was on sale on Kino Lorber's site. But I purchased the Blu-ray based solely upon that trailer, and my brain was just basically melted. I'm like, this has Cinema PsyOps written all over it. But when I bought it, I was totally expecting Horror House on Highway 5. 
Oh yeah, okay, I get you. From that yeah. from that trailer, you can guess why I was guessing that. Why I'm like, well, this is all over the place. What the fuck is going on, right? Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't want to watch this at all. Who would? <laughs> if this... We're going to, but who would? <laughs> but looking at the film, at least for like you know, with the trailer and the way that the trailer is jumbled up, I was expecting it to be one thing, and what I got was a much more coherent, um, sort of drama based through line with a carry subplot jammed in. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh it's like they were making an anti-bullying film to start and then saw Carrie and went, "Oh, we got to just do we're going to go full bore." Well, we got to do this. I mean, if we don't, who will? Yeah, you must be aware right. of the wrath of God and his snakes. Yeah, yeah. All all that stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, uh Jennifer, first 20. All right. Uh well, Jennifer, she wakes up in the morning, gets ready for school. She's putting on a uniform, so obviously she probably goes to a very nice school, but her dad is a bit off. Um, tells her not to be late tonight. Uh, he doesn't want to have to wait for dinner again. Do you recognize her father at all? Uh, I think so. Like, I, or I recognize him. I don't know from where. I only recognize him from one thing specifically. He plays the former, uh, government agent who helped Mel Gibson's character in Bird on the Wire disappear whenever, uh, Mel Gibson's character went underground for the witness protection program. He was like the... the, ed- the agent that was helping oh. him. And well, now I'm thinking of something completely different. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I can ever think of seeing him in. And he was a very, very old man in that because he was a pretty old man in this in 1978. Yeah. yeah. And Bird on the Wire was like in the 90s, I think. So anyway, um, he doesn't want her to be late for dinner you know, or late with his dinner, by the way. So she has to cook dinner. She has to do everything. Um, so I don't know, in a sense, fuck you, dad. He's a Christian man. So therefore patriarchy and it is his right as a man to demand that his subservient woman do what she is told until the day that she is married and a dowry is paid for her hand in marriage. All right. Settle down. No need to get up on the soapbox this early. I'm just basically stating his frame of mind. That's it. (laughs) And then he also wants her to make sure she gets all A's. Because, you know, you got to get all A's, too. Can't have any of this being dummies and nothing, you know. He's two better, steps better. away from turning her full-fledged into his wife and making it really rapey and gross at all times. He's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's very disgusting. It's 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 not a good scene for Jen already to start out with this. Well, she leaves. Uh, they own a pet store in town. She opens up the pet store, and then heads out. She goes to school. And we see all the bad girls, uh, or the super popular girls, or whoever they are. They are talking in a group, and they are, of course, copying a test down. The, the bad one stole the test, and they're all trying to get the answers off this test that's coming up. As they're going in, uh, Jennifer's just walking in, minding her own fucking business, when the lead bad girl, Sandra, says, Hey, what did you see? You know, no one else will talk, but you know you're a goody two-shoes. And she goes, I didn't see anything, so fuck it, I don't give a shit. And uh, not in those exact words. Those are paraphrasing. Not in those exact words. I'm I'm paraphrasing. But uh, she's clearly too good of a girl to say something like that. Yeah. And uh, so the other girls like, well, you you know, you better keep your mouth shut and you know, uh, threatening for actually no reason at all. Um. So. We cut to the headmistress is tending to her plants and a older lady teacher walks in and talks about Sandra and these other girls and how they're so horrible and she can't really do anything with them in class. They just won't listen. They won't do anything. Um, the headmaster's head, ma- head headmistress says, you know, to remember girls like that. They had them. They've had them all these years in this school and they put one in the White House and, and one is doing something else amazing. Uh, so put you know, one in the White House. They meant she's a first lady, yeah, by the way. That's, yes, that's exactly. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, so, you know, just handle it. Or if you don't, we'll fucking fire you, is the inferment she makes. Yeah, this is a real um, pump up the volume high school situation with the yeah. evil robot woman from Superman 3 running the high school and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're 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 very right. Yeah. Um, My references are all over the place tonight. Deal with it. <laughs> your references are crazy, man. They're out of control. And everyone knows that. But then we cut to they're in the bathroom and the, the mean girls are all talking shit. Doing drugs in the bathroom. Um, you can tell there's a girl in there. Her name's Jane. She's kind of a bigger girl. And uh, the other girls uh, use her kind of for money, it seems. Um, more than anything else. She is the richest and has the biggest yeah. slush fund of them all. So everybody's always bumming money off of her because she just wants to fit in and feel like she's accepted. And they use that to get money, which is gross. This, this is These are facts. So, okay, they go through all that. Now we're at the test time. We're at the test. 
And the lead girl, Sandra, she takes out her cheat sheet, and she's really shit at cheating. Um, something tells me she's probably shit at most of everything in life. So, uh, she's shit, is shit at cheating, and she gets busted for it. And everyone's like, well, yeah, I mean... Okay, and then she tries to blame uh, uh, Jennifer. She says, Jennifer gave me those notes. And Jennifer goes, I didn't give you anything. You took them. And then she tries to get Jane to back her up, but Jane says, no way. She even tries to blame Jane. She said, I got them from Jane, who got them from Jennifer. And she's like, no, that's, and Jane, or Jennifer's like, that never happened. And this teacher is not buying Sandra shit at all. Oh my god, we are watching such a fucking Degrassi teen drama right now. <laughs> right, right. It's just fucking it's like, is this nano two one oh? What the fuck are we doing over here? Gotta say that anyway. gotta say that at this moment while Cord is watching this, he is regretting his decision to buy a movie based on a trailer and really wondering if anything good is gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> and is about to text Matt and be like, Yeah, um so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just right here. I, I, I know everything that you guys are hearing. If you're not going to watch this movie, you're probably like, what the fuck? And you're you're totally right. I was down and out and wondering what the fuck was going to happen. And oh, my God, this film does answer me in kind. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, uh, it goes a little crazy on us all. Yeah. So just wait. I know this just feels like bullshit drama that you could watch on Degrassi or 90210 or some other fucking ch- teen drama but they do kind of go there eventually yeah but trust me it it gets good (laughs) right it gets it gets better anyway uh (laughs) we cut to the headmaster's office and that's our first clip sandra accused me of stealing i did not you've got it all wrong now sandra jennifer you're not used to our ways are you dear but mrs kelly you're supposed to be serving in the dining hall aren't you Yes, ma'am. You may go. Jane? Where can we get your mother on the phone? Oh, she's in Paris. You can call my father's lawyer. You may go, too, then. (sighs) Sandra. Now, 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 dear. This isn't the first time a girl got into a little mischief. You are going to call Senator Tremaine, aren't you? Oh, no, don't do that. Oh, Daddy's really busy. He couldn't come anyway. Well, surely he will under these circumstances, Sandra. Well... I'm afraid I have no choice but to phone him, have I? Senator, I know how frightfully busy you are. I... Not at all, Mrs. Kelly. What can I do to help you? Well, it, it seems we have a little problem. I'm afraid Sandra's been caught cheating. Must be some mistake. No Tremaine's ever had a problem like that. Under the circumstances, I must ask you to come down here. I really must. I can't do it, Mrs. Kelly. I just can't do it at this time. I know how difficult it is for you at this time, but I think it's your responsibility as a parent. I'm fully aware of my responsibility to Sandra, Mrs. Kelly. Then you will come, Senator. Thank you. My coffee ready yet? In a minute, Papa. The kitten's sick again. Better not get too attached to it. I know he'll get better. Listen, Papa. That meat wasn't cooked near enough. You know I won't let no blood touch my lips. Sorry, Papa. I got a problem at school. You see, there's this girl that doesn't like me much. I can't stand red meat. Now, you know that. She's the most popular girl in a bunch. Now you've got to learn to see through people, Jenny. Don't trust them. She's the prettiest girl there, and all the girls think that she's... I had a vision last night. Beware... Beware the mask of beauty. Corruption. Be not the servant of corruption. Trust not the wicked in their ways. You see... The Lord says that we are brother to the dragon. Papa, don't do that anymore. The Bible says to take up the serpent. Nobody believes that anymore. Remember this? I don't want to see it. That's the past that made us leave. When you stuck that tiny little hand, you're only five years old, and you stuck that tiny little hand in the box. You made me. You made me do it. God made you. 
God chose you to make up to me for your mama. Someday, Jenny, you're going to know what I know. Someday, Jenny. Holy Jesus, that was a long as fuck clip. Is everybody still with us? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's been a long time since we had a long as fuck clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like last week. Well, that wasn't that long. You just stop it. You're getting whiny. It's not the length of your clip. It's how you tell the story with it. <laughs> so anyway, that night, Jen dreams of her father's words. And then her dad actually goes in and starts talking to some snakes he has and says that he wants them to speak to her. Well, the next day, Daddy Senator shows up and pays 10 grand to make this cheating go away. And it helps supposed to help with the new tennis court. It's uh, almost like the headmaster or mistress, however you want to state it. Yeah wanted something to happen so that she could shake down a parent. And the whole reason this school exists is for rich kids who are misbehaved to basically buy their way out of trouble to get an education. Pretty much, probably, yeah. Although there isn't a board because the reason's Jen there, she's there in a scholarship. So I'm sure there are good kids here too. It's just this headmistress knows which kids are the bad kids whose parents have the deepest pockets who are also, instead of wanting to actually parent, will just throw money money at a problem to make it go away right and that's pretty much what private schools exist to do yeah pretty much so anyway um then senator asks about this jennifer uh gal and the headmistress said you know she's trouble but unfortunately she's uh she's one of the charity cases in in her terms uh a scholarship case in that um the board made it necessary for them to take her in for nothing else than because she had the highest test scores they ever had. So Jennifer Smart and the board's like, wow, she could really probably go places if we help her. But the headmistress doesn't see it that way because she doesn't come from rich parents. Yeah, the headmistress is a classist fucking twat waffle. Yeah, who would prefer to support sociopaths over actual smart people. Her personal monetary gain, which makes her her own very special kind of fucking sociopath. Yeah, she's uh, she's just a cunt. So anyway, <laughs> twat waffle, twat waffle. Um, so anyway, then the senator goes outside, goes to his car. Sandra's thanking him, but he goes, "Hey, this happens again. I'll take you out of school." This is the f- her fourth school, by the way. He goes, "This is your fourth and final school. I'm done." He goes, "You get kicked out here. You're on your own. You can go live with your mom." And that sends her to a tailspin. She goes, "Well, mom doesn't want me. Mom doesn't love me." And he goes, "Hey, your mom will want you as long as the check's written." So yikes. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound like Sandra had much of a chance anyway. But doesn't sound like she's all that. You know. We see here that Sandra is a product of nature as well as nurture. Yeah. For her psychopathy. Yeah, pretty much. This is, uh, that's some bad shit going on right there. She Uh, cannot feel anything because there has never been a consequence for any of her actions other than neglect. So she continues to lash out at everything around her in order to feel anything or some control over her world around her, right? That's why she's doing yeah. this shit. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, you're you're right. And the um, reason she's going after Jennifer is because, I mean, for most outward appearances, Jennifer has everything going for her. The world is kind of behind her, and she's just getting this supposed leg up, when in reality, it just increases the test scores and makes their school look better to have a student like that, therefore scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> but because of that, she obviously resents her, so she just starts talking down and becomes another classist fucking twat waffle. Yeah, and, and everyone's just kind of bad. Uh, <laughs> right, except like, for Jennifer. But right, but everybody is like really down on Jennifer, and like she's like really kind of. She's just constantly getting beat down and browbeat, and it just reminds me of this girl that I knew once named Carrie White. Matt, uh huh. Carrie White. <laughs> Oh, ah, okay, Carrie. Yeah, all right, my bad. <laughs> like, oh, you—you you thought I thought, I, was... I thought you were telling me a real fucking story about your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I would never give out last names, and I barely That's give true. out first names unless I'm going to make up a different name for somebody when I'm telling a story that may or may not be true. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like what. <laughs> I just love that my delivery was deadpan enough to snag you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it really was. Um, but but right, like this is basically like instead of creepy Carrie, creepy Carrie because her mom's a religious zealot, it's um you know classism joke because it's, she's it's also she's she's southern, she's poor from West Virginia, and yeah. you know that she got this scholarship and they her, make fun of her for being a hick. 
Yeah. So, so it's classist horse shit. So it's basically the same kind of thing. And and they just found a way to make it just different enough to where you're like, no, it's not really Carrie, even though they very clearly are trying to even make the actress look like Sissy Spacek to yeah. and Carrie. They're not, you know, it's not intentional. They're just, it's the similarities are homage. They're just there. <laughs> There's no intended. It's nothing. Nothing's intended, but it fucking happened. Um, <laughs> we didn't mean to be so heavily influenced. We just kind of were. <laughs> we just kind of did. We just did it. Anyway, so with all this, then Jen corner or Sa- Sandra corners Jen and says she's getting ready to make her life a living hell. And there's ends the first 20 minutes. So we see it's up a nice base. Got a character. She's smart. She just wants to get through her life. Her father's a religious zealot who might be mentally deficient because he can't do anything on his own. His whole thing about, fuck, he doesn't know how to eat a fucking steak to save his fucking life. Um, <laughs> all, all that shit. Uh, he's a religious zealot, wants her to talk to snakes again, but she's trying to avoid something in her life about that. So something bad happened there. And now we have these girls who are all sociopath, rich, and doped up who are going to cause her problems and a, and a headmistress who could care fucking less. Did you notice the picture sort of warps around the edges too? Like, I think they're using like, not necessarily fisheye lenses, but like very wide angle lenses. So it sort of distorts the image a little bit because things feel kind of like not necessarily stretched out, but just like off kilter. And a lot of the shots are, um, I don't know if it's intentionally done or not, but some of the shots aren't like, you know, framed in such a way where it's all straight on, you know, perfect. Yeah framing like the frames are a little off kilter in some of the shots for certain things it's all very much similar things that you see in De Palma's carry um that they're very clearly influenced by but they're doing their own thing with it and sort of like working around this variation on a theme you know like if you were to see a student filmmaker do this and say that they were trying to do their version of a carry and they just did it like real quick you you wouldn't have a problem with that right <laughs> no yeah no <laughs> and the fact that they did this so blatantly but yet changed it just enough is so fucking brilliant and how they they execute it um so she somehow had this power to control snakes in her past and something horrible clearly happened so now she's terrified of that idea but her father is still a hardcore religious zealot who believes in the taking up of snakes are you familiar with this that that, that, that did you actually know about the taking up of snakes or serpents yeah, I've, I've heard and seen of such things yeah i don't know think- like, I, yeah, it's a thing. I don't know thing. all the details of it, but I know that it is a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, it's totally yeah. a thing, uh, particularly um, in the there's portions of the Deep South. Uh, mm-hmm. But there is a certain sect of Christianity that goes far more ultra <laughs> <laughs> out into the deeps of their faith based uh, practices and they literally handle poisonous serpents while they pray or while they are preaching and often speaking in tongues and convulsing and doing that sort of thing and their belief is that they will not be bitten by the snake nor if they are will the venom harm them because if this is what God intended so be it or something yeah, along those lines That's, that I'm, usually I'm works out so well it. for everyone yeah, I'm simplifying it, but um, I will tell you this. Most of them usually milk the fuck out of the snake just in case before they handle it. Yeah. And it's usually drugged. <laughs> I mean, it's usually a work that some of, of these folks it's a fu- do. It's a fucking, it's, it's, a, it's a grift, man. Right, right. So we need to discuss this before we move on. In this particular film, however, this apparently is a thing. This um, is a very much a thing, yeah. Like, it's so much a thing in that the old man is flat out telling us that Jennifer had the power to communicate with the snakes and that it was her divine given talent by God through the strength of her faith in God to be able to do it. He does say pretty much that like he beats around the bush, but that is what he is. Basically it's, it's implied that it is her faith in this Christian God and this particular practice of taking up serpents that makes her able to do what it is that she does. So the thing that makes this interesting, Matt is this is the very first time that I can 100% agree that the power is evil in this film. (laughs) The power, Power is evil. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Christian God allowing vengeance. Oh, Jesus Christ. From the use of serpents, dude. This, this is what evangelicals want. This is the future evangelicals want, Matt. This, let's just remember, we got canceled as humanity because uh, two people listened to a snake over an apple. So that's why God canceled us. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> Yay. <laughs> right. But anyway, in this particular world, she really is imbued with the power of the snakes of Christ. It's not like telekinesis. It's different. She can control snakes. She, she can control snakes. This is These are facts. In this movie. <laughs> right. And I know everybody right now, while they're listening to us talk about this, they're like, come on, guys. This is just, no. What? No. Your alarm bells are going off. Trust me, I know. I was there, too, while watching the film. We're only 20 minutes into it, guys. It's going to just... get better. Guys, it's going to get better. <laughs> it's worth it. You have to wait. Even if you're just going to listen to us talk about the crazy shit we saw, just wait. If nothing else, just remember this. In this first 20 minutes, there are so many characters that you start hating so vehemently in the first 20 minutes that you'll at least want to stick around to see if they get fucked. All right. That's it. You'll at least have that because that's what got me in the first 20 minutes was just I really hope a lot of these characters just fucking die. <laughs> well, there's so, that. And then also you instantly have more and more sympathy for Jennifer as it goes, because she's just fucking put upon everywhere she ends up. Yeah, everywhere. She gets put upon. Yeah, everyone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, if that's not enough to drive you forward, at least and get you some interest in the hopes of seeing some kind of vengeance and on her side for this ultimate vengeance, I don't know what will. But then knowing that she has Jesus Christ snake powers, I knew one way or another, Matt, I was going to love this film. And this is where I normally relax. And I'm telling everybody, just relax, because it's going to go there. It's going to go yeah, there. Everything. <laughs> Everything's going to be just fine. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we, yeah. start, we start the next 20 minutes. We're out lunch now and jen's serving because jen has to work in the kitchen uh because it's always a smart idea for your less fortunate students or scholarship students to force them into servitude as well because you know that will make all the other kids really not fuck with them a lot i, I never I, what the fuck <laughs> jesus christ no kid should be also serving their classmates lunches unless it's like a rotating thing and all kids eventually have to do it just say it it's fucking it's a it's a way to make classism definitely a fucking thing oh wait it's not it's a thing yeah. it's a thing it's a thing it's it's a thing it's definitely a thing it's a thing yeah so anyway while she's serving it's like a really hot soup sandra makes jen spill the soup on sandra's own hand burning her so she tries to accuse Jen of doing it. Unfortunately, the male teacher uh, who caught Sandra cheating at the test also saw that Sandra did that on purpose and covered for Jen so that, you know, nothing, you know, they couldn't get away with that shit. Can I get a ruling on how creepy this guy is in this sequence? Uh, not creepy at all. Not when, not when catching this chick and saving, you know, so Jen can keep going to school. All right, I just needed to get a spot check because I would agree he's not creepy at all. But yeah, can we also not... get? Can I get rulings on later on in the film on whether or not he's creepy too? He's not creepy at all, but Sandra makes him seem creepy by saying lies. One thing to understand: Sandra is definitely a sociopath, and one thing all sociopaths do: they lie, lies of grandeur to other people to make themselves bigger. So then later on, uh, the principal actually is talking to the teacher right there, and the teacher says so, or the headmistress is talking to the teacher. And the teacher and the prince the teacher says well wait so what are you saying it's either those have money and those you know or those who are right and she says well the people who have the money are always right and you're like oh fuck <sighs> anyway a fellow lunch uh lady is talking to uh jen and's like hey you know you just don't pay attention to them don't worry that and like that girl's been to more schools than i have teeth she said and she's always getting into trouble but you know be careful around her and then he even said like hey listen like she makes it infer it's like if she doesn't shape up just shoot that bitch and it's like god damn fuck all right yeah i like this lady this lady's getting about it right now <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't into that. Really? Because, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think Sandra should probably die. I don't know. <laughs> it's me. No, I, yeah, I, it's, it's not that I don't think Sandra should die. I just don't think that's very sound advice for an adult to give to a child. Probably not. But, hey, listen, that child's back's up against the wall, all right? Sometimes your, your advice has to get, you know, a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, so, uh that night, uh, the all the young girls who actually live on campus, they're getting ready for a night out. Uh, a lot of girls getting ready. I'm not going to thank the movie because these are supposed to be high school girls. So I get a little uncomfortable with this, but there is nudity in this. But these are supposed to be high school girls. So on behalf of everyone else in the planet who realizes that these women are all of age to be naked on film. Thank you, movie. Uh, okay. All right, I mean, thanks for the actresses, I guess. There, I could say it like that. 
<laughs> I'm just, uh, I get a little weirded out sometimes, you know? <laughs> sometimes you let the fantasy side of it get in the way. I can understand, like, in a rape scene, because I totally agree with you there. Yeah. But in this case, if you were in the situation where you were able to see this as a teenage boy and it's age appropriate for you or something. Oh, like yeah, lines, yeah, yeah. Okay. You'd be totally fine with it. And in that context, you can say thank you, movie, because they're actresses yeah. that are, in fact, of appropriate well age. Well, of age. Too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're well within age. They get ready and uh, there are some douches and t bergs come pick up the girls and uh the lead guy dayton he's uh he's into sandra but he hates her overweight friend jane um jane just kind of gets thrown around but you know sandra's like hey listen she has a crush on you and she'll pay for fucking everything um as they drive they at one point go up to a rooftop of a parking garage to hang out and the two guys who work there are like you know we gotta be careful that they're gonna probably like have an accident and die and one of the other guys goes what do we give a fuck and i was like that's me right there that's me as an employee what do i give a fuck if those kids go up there and die how's that my problem <laughs> <laughs> that's that sounds like other people's problems other than mine <laughs> I'm just, I'm just <laughs> yeah, make sure no cars. I'm just make sure to make sure people pay for their parking spots. That's all. <laughs> yeah, you're not even really security at that gate. You don't give a no. fuck at all. No, they they yeah. You know, parking garages hire their own security. I'm just there to make sure people pay for parking. That's it. <laughs> right. If some kid wants to go up there, race around, and take a header off a parking garage, well, I guess that was his plan. Cause I guess that's his life goal, and hope he congratulates himself on it. That is the uh, so end of his anyway, particular story by his own choice. That's goddamn right. Um, that night, later on, they go to a disco, and um, Sandra's convincing Drayton to help her with different amounts of things. Another guy goes up to Jane and tries to hit him up for money, and Jane like goes out and say, "Why? I always give you people money." And he's like, "Come on, give me like a hundred bucks or something." He even calls her overweight to her face, or says she's a little chunky, and I'm like, "Oh my god, this is just fucking unbelievable." Yeah, the, the bullying in this seems so much more excessive. Whereas, had you and I watched this when we were kids and maybe yeah. age appropriate to the story, it pretty much would have felt like, "Yeah, your life could be like this in the right the right areas." Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it reminds me kind of a lot of the bullying we saw in like Monster Club. Monster where, Squad, I yeah. That as, Monster Squad, yeah, where I watched that as an adult and I went, oh, wow, that's hurtful. Yep. Um. Yeah. So anyway, later on, we cut back to Jen and her dad are hanging out and that's our next clip. Why would anyone be against you? I don't know, Papa. I'm not in, that's all. You're in with the Lord. And that ought to be good enough for anybody. Those girls don't know that. To them, I'm a hillbilly. I don't belong there. They call me names. I'm a skag geek. Nothing. You're from the hills and proud of it, like your folks before you and their folks. You'd understand it if your mama was alive. Papa. Mama ran away. She didn't die. Your mama died when you were three, Jenny. She never saw you in all your glory. She never saw you when you had the power. Times have changed, Papa. I see the reason. You've changed. This is the way the light has to reach you. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. It has nothing to do with that. But this has. All of the congregation, even the old folks, was amazed at your power. Nobody ever had it like you, Jenny. You spoke in new tongues, and the serpents heard you. The serpents of the Lord heard you. They came when you summoned, and they healed when you called them, and they struck when you commanded. That tiny hand healed. It reached for truth. You had the power. It was evil. It was wrong. You know it was wrong. It, it was a lifetime ago, Papa. Let's get to the box. No, Papa. I won't, damn it! Don't swear, Jenny. That's filth. That's just the trouble. I don't swear. I don't take pills. I don't sleep with movie stars. Wait, Jenny. It's in the Bible. Mark 16, chapter 17, verse 18. Bye, and Papa. these signs shall follow them that believe me. In my Papa. name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. And they shall drink up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on them. 
Okay, so we're going to go back into this whole Carrie situation here real quick. Yeah. Before with Carrie, it was whenever she got upset, her power would manifest and she had telekinesis. She could knock the little boy over that was calling her creepy Carrie. Uh, She made stuff fly off the dude's desk when he kept calling her Cassie instead of her true name, which is Carrie after her period shows up. Stuff like that. It was They were showing her power manifesting over time. So in order to make sure that your movie is not Carrie, you have to have her power be an onset all at once. You can't show it developing over time because then you very clearly are going more towards those story plot points. But what you can do is say that at one point in time, before you'd given it up, you were the most powerful at this specific thing. And the power, by the way, is not telekinesis. So this is not Carrie. She, in fact, can control the snakes of Christ. Yes. And we also find out that she's turned down that power for some reason. And it's a very Uh, dark reason that has clearly given her nightmares for into her teenage years. We do know that this this time frame, they they are from the hills originally. Of West Virginia, Uh, they specifically state at one point. And then we are are arguing about one thing, whether her mother is dead or alive. That's the that's the argument. The I know, but I just want to just wanted to point all of this stuff out. Yeah, about the whole carry situation oh, here. The carry thing. Yeah, I, I'm talking about the story, man. I know, I know, but what I'm getting at is we're up to the point in the carry situation. This argument she's yeah. having with her dad about whether or not her mother's still alive, and then about the taking up the snakes again. We're we're back to the point in the story where after they've been building and building and building, we see Carrie use her power momentarily on her mom. Yes, for like a brief second, but like but not. We do really. not see that yet here. This is how they changed up from Carrie. She doesn't use her power until we come until. uh, But here, uh, but here, that point where she's using the power on her mom is us being told by her father, you used to take up snakes and you were the best or something along those lines. She was definitely the best at it. That's the story replacement. (laughs) I'm just showing you the pinpoints of there. I gotcha. Of how they're changing it just enough to not get sued. (laughs) Just, just enough not to get sued. Shut up, boy. You want to get sued? Right. It's the shinning, my man. It's the shinning. It's the shinning. Don't you mean the shining? <laughs> All right. Now we should move on. All right. Well, anyway, Jen runs away, and she's run away, has memories of the night that she did the snake thing uh, and uh, uh, when she was a little girl, and then she snaps out of it by running into a homeless dude and scaring herself. Uh, she comes back and dad says he put the snakes away. You know, he doesn't really say sorry, but he seems to be like apologetic for it. Um, or he's gaslighting her by just saying he put the snakes away. That's true. Um, anyway, we cut to class the next day and the subject is snakes and fuck it. That's our next clip. Comparison: The venom of the cobra is deadlier than that of our own rattlesnake. The Indian cobra can expand its hood to almost four times the diameter of its body. Indian fakers have been known to so mesmerize their snakes that they can kiss the hood as a sign of its uh, complete submission. Jane? That would be like the bullfighter when they tamed the bull? Yes, that's exactly right, Jane, except this is a religious cult. The snake is the most worshipped object in the world. It has been for thousands of years. I think its uh, mystical significance is obvious. You mean because it's sexy? If you mean penis worship, Sandra, why don't you just come out and say so? (laughs) Now, the snake has been worshipped in India, of course, in our country by the Hopi Indians, and in some of the southern hill communities, they still feel that superstitious connection between the Bible and the snake. Why call it a superstition? Well, what else would you call it, Jennifer? These people bring a live snake into their congregation, a poison snake, and they believe that it won't harm them. But some of them... Have you uh, seen such worship, Jennifer? People believe that the snakes give them the power. Power? You mean uh, some kind of energy? Yes. If they're pure in their hearts, the snakes respond to them. They aren't bitten. The snakes obey them. (laughs) You must be kidding. Jennifer, who would believe that? The hill people believe it because they've seen it. They know. Well, uh, what do they know, Jennifer? I mean... What is the power? Sometimes even children can do it. Yes, and sometimes children are bitten and die. But the power was gone. And God meant to take them. I see. 
Thank you, Jennifer. It's very interesting. Man, shit's getting weird in this fucking movie. Yeah, shit's getting weird. Jen, now Jennifer seems to go from being like, none of that's true, Dad, none of that's true, to now starting to believe in it again. Like, yeah, fucking A. Us snake people are fucking the salt of the earth. Well, she's already being pushed into believing that she is other and that yeah. there's something wrong with her and that she is less than. So, like anyone who is constantly abused, you end up with this type of revenge fantasy or at least this type of wanting to find a way to strike back and defend yourself and so she is basically being bullied to the point where she is going to accept this power and use it for vengeance which still fits in the bible because they are the snakes of christ and will not work for her otherwise it's been stated that way this is the story we're being told yes it's the power of Christ that is the, the vengeance power of, of cr- serpents in this. The, the power of serpents compel you. <laughs> the power of venomous bites compel you. <laughs> the power of snakeys compel you. The power of Jake the Snake compels you. <laughs> was it danger worms? <laughs> danger <laughs> worms. <laughs> the power of danger worms compels you. <laughs> uh, later on, uh, a couple of girls... Not the the mean ones. A couple different girls. They come up and they ask Jen if they she wants to join the swim team. They need some help. And Jen is very we happy to. S- we've seen them said, defend Jennifer earlier, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, well, they didn't defend Jennifer because like, Jennifer hadn't shown up. But we saw them at odds with Sandra and her friends already. Right. And um, they were looking for Jennifer, too, I think. Yeah, they could have been. Yeah it's, um, yeah. it's all jumbling up in the teenage yeah. drama. But we know that they are at least decent kids and not part of yes. the people picking on they're Jennifer. Just, they're swimmers. They're not, you know, they're not some of the assholes. Um, Jen says, yeah, she goes, uh, I'm just not really good at the diving part, like diving into the water, but I'm pretty good at swimming. And they're like, yeah, we'll teach you that. No problem. And you're like, oh, my God, finally, Jen has some friends. That's. That's nice for her. Which does kind of eventually happen. You know, life does yeah, actually kind of get better. Yeah. yeah. And you do meet some people that are not total fucking utter fuckholes. Yeah. Eventually. Sometimes you have to wait till after high school. Sometimes you don't. Well, later that day as Jen's starting to learn how to dive and to start the swimming, Sandra shows up and starts giving her shit. Well, the other girls were with Sandra. It's swim class time. Well, the other swim girls start defending Jennifer and calling, you know, saying, hey, Sandra, you're just a fucking bitch and drug addict and you can't fucking do shit and then she even challenged her to a swim off saying hey you know you didn't you say you got trained by some famous swimmer because sandra of course over lies about fucking everything sandra says yeah let's let's fucking do this and there's a going sandra pushes jennifer in and then all the other girls start just jumping in everyone it starts just a whole little hey we're all gonna fuck around and have fun and everyone's splashing one another it's it's actually a good time until jen kind of swims to the edge and Sandra pushes her underwater and starts holding there. Sandra's trying to kill Jennifer. Yeah, she's trying so, to straight up murder her ass. Yeah. So Jane is like, holy shit, she's watching this. And she really doesn't like what's happening to her. So Jane actually stops Sandra from drowning her. She basically says, my God, you're drowning her. Or you're going to kill yeah. her and well, stops her from st- murdering she grabs her. her. Yeah, grabs her hand, arm. Yeah, and pulls her um, away, and she stops a woman. Yeah. She stops the girl from murdering someone else. Yeah. Later, they go back in the locker room, and Sandra actually admonishes Jane and says, "Are you my friend or not? If you're my friend, you just follow me, or else, you know, she'll cut her out of the of the group." And that ends that twenty minutes. All right. So if there was any doubt that Sandra was a psychopath before, she tries to basically sneaky drown a fucking Jennifer. Uh, yeah. In front of Jane, basically in the full view of one of her friends, as thinking that her friend is going to back her up in this murder and basically try to make it look like it's an accident that happened when everybody oh. was swimming. And if you think about it, this is how psychotic she is. She literally, after the whole test debacle, she goes up to Jen and she literally says, really, you dime me out on the cheating thing. She goes, that wasn't nice of you. I, You know, you don't want to be my friend. And <laughs> Jen's like, you... Dime down on me. If, she, if Sandra would have dimed down on anyone other than Jen, this probably would have been a problem. But it's like, what? I mean, what the fuck are you doing? You just you're yelling at her for diming you out when you dimed her out to start out with. 
you falsely That's accused you know her to try and cast it, when you falsely accused her and she literally yeah. just said no i know for a fact you did it or whatever yeah uh-huh. And, and yeah. you are mad at her for not being friendly to you by doing that. You are a psycho. If, we, if you are a psychopath, if you accuse someone of wrongdoing that you did and they just say, no, you did it. And you're like, that hurt my feelings. Then you got to be like, then you're a psychopath because you don't really have feelings. All right. Stop calling me out on the fucking air. That's enough. <laughs> I, I'm talking about Sandra. <laughs> oh, right. In this context, you are absolutely yeah. right. I yeah. don't fucking appreciate it, though. There's something really not right about what you're saying. <laughs> Just fuck it. Why do I feel so mad and defensive all the time? <laughs> I don't know why. It's ups- I don't know why it's fucking upsetting me. But like when you're talking about Sandra, you're absolutely right. But it still angers me the way that you're talking. <laughs> I'm, you, uh, you might want to get checked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already know I got tendencies, man. I'm good. <laughs> I All right, well, that... I, I know I know what my issues are. <laughs> right. Well, we start the next 20 minutes, and now we see the first time Jen's kind of in this trance, just kind of staring off. And as she does this, as Sandra's getting ready, she looks down at her stuff, and there's snakes all over it, scaring her. Um, and then as she's looking at it, the snakes disappear. Well, Jen gets home, and her dad's like, "Hey, I don't like you swimming." And Jen's, Jenny's like, uh, you know, it's good exercise. He goes, well, it's, it's an abomination. It's dirty, he says. It's fucking, she's swimming in chlorine. That can't be any dirtier than anything. That's got to be the cleanest thing since holy water. How is <laughs> swimming a fucking problem? Uh, it's clean in a sanitary nature, but it is dirty in the fact that other people get to see the body that only he should possess as her father. It's fucking weird, man. That's Christianity, my dude. Yeah, well, you're not fucking wrong either. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Um, um, <laughs> it's really fucking creepy, but what they're trying to do here is the same thing whenever Carrie's mom got upset that she might be going to the dance and was going to make herself a, a gown. And she's talking about the dirty pillows and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, she sets Carrie off and Carrie exhibits a little more power and things, you know, and gets locked in the closet or what have you. That's basically yeah. what they're doing here. This is that same scenario. <sighs> it's annoying. I know. I, hate, I know. I hate but it's, these parents. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, everybody in this film, this is a 100% heal program. This is a heel, minus, except for Jennifer. Minus Jennifer. And like the teacher. I'm, I'm hashtag team Jennifer and hashtag creeped out by that teacher. <laughs> I'm hashtag team Jennifer as well. It, it probably also creeped out by the teacher, but that's probably only because of his fro. Yeah, I think, so. I think I just can't trust him because of the fro. Yeah. Like, like, the, the Mike Brady fro just, yeah, it just gets me. There's just something about that teacher that makes me think he's going to invite me back to his hot tub, and I'm not I'm not into that with him. <laughs> and then you get a little mad at him because he doesn't. <laughs> no, I'm perfectly comfortable with not being invited. Sure. All right, anyway. We start, so anyway, um, then she's kind of taking care of this cat. The dad's like, ah, you don't want to get too attached. I'm going to have to sell that. So he takes the cat away from her. It's like, man, you were just begging for snakes in your bed, motherfucker. So the next also, day. Also, just let your daughter have a fucking kitten, you dick. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, he's a fucking, he's unbelievably just fucking up, man. Way fucked up. Well, the next day during English class, uh, they're talking about, like, uh, I forget the story now. Uh, but anyway, the teacher's asking kind of like what the story means. And it's like how people can look or say one thing but do another. And uh, uh, Jennifer really punctuates this by staring at Sandra saying how one person can be beautiful but yet be completely evil and horrible. So it's like, damn. She made eye contact when she said it. The that was during the... The throwing of shade in this scenario is quite yeah. excellent and should be enough little spice to pique your interest to wonder what more we will see from such a saucy Jennifer. I know. I'm just saying right now, man, I'm like, if there's like anybody else in this class and there was like the current days and something like that happened, definitely somebody had been like, oh, I think she's talking about you. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically like hearing NIB, the opening riff to NIB (laughs) from Black Sabbath. This is that moment when she she throws that shade when you're like, oh, fuck, it's on. Like you start to feel those tingles like it's going to get bad. It's like it's like when you raise your hand, go, teacher, can I go to the restroom now? Why? Because I am super uncomfortable in here. It is way weird. We could cut this tension with a butter knife, sir. It's a weird energy in here, man. I'm telling you. Um, So that night then. 
after a phone well she's she's getting she's done with her duties at the school she the the other lunch lady always helps officer gives her a ride home she's like no it's friday i'll i'm gonna i take a shower here and then i'll head home um she then gets in a phone argument with her father over feeding the snakes because he was like we're out of eggs and she goes i just bought eggs and he had to feed the snakes and she's all fucking mad she doesn't want to feed the snakes so anyway jen goes down she starts taking her shower there and during her shower, she finds out that her stuff got stolen, her clothes and everything. She can hear people talking to her from the shadows. She's just asking for her stuff back. She just wants to be able to go home. She needs her purse. Well, she finds out all the stuff was hung from these big, uh, like the, the metal, uh, the, the, uh, tubes above the pool. She is also naked except for a towel this entire towel. sequence, which. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so she climbs up a ladder that's left there. And as she's climbing up, there comes Dayton with a camera, takes some pictures. She falls off. Her towel comes off. And she falls off into the water. This cannot um, be a thank you movie because of the embarrassing no. and involuntary nudity nature this is of definitely this. definitely not a thank you movie. Yeah, this is not cool <laughs> what yeah, they do to no. her at all. Uh, she gets home. She's in like sweats and stuff because uh, all her clothes land into the water with her. Um, her dad burnt the casserole. He came and fucking cook a casserole that she left for him. She goes to her room and cries <laughs> with the kitten and just holds her kitten. And I'm sitting here going, all right, this movie can start picking up on her murdering everyone at any boom point in time now because <laughs> fuck i'm starting to feel uh, i'm starting to have feelings that i don't like feeling i'm starting to remember things i don't like to remember right so what this film does so so well is put you past the point where any other reasonable person would have been like yeah it's time you killed these fuckers like <laughs> yeah, yeah. every single time something happens to jennifer you're like okay you can kill them now or you can like, start hoping, killing them now like and it just keeps jennifer, like i was hoping jennifer could get a special superpower where instead he couldn't them quickly they got like the worst type of ass cancer and they would just <laughs> suffer and die from it slowly that's kind of what i was hoping would happen eventually <laughs> oh, wow that's a lot of hate in your heart <laughs> actually, yeah well uh, i told you this movie started making me feel a certain way and making me have remember certain things i don't like remembering in my life so fuck them <laughs> <laughs> hey, they can fucking die for all i care do we need to go out and pitch the ball <laughs> we might have to throw the ball around a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> it sure sounds like it jeez i'm sorry yeah, i didn't know this movie yeah, this would be is, so triggering for you uh, this, this is one of those subjects that gets me so yeah i get a little i get a little triggery all right next time i know for sure that i have a bullying movie i will warn you ahead of time yeah okay that might be nice yeah thanks <laughs> You know, I didn't realize it would make me feel that way, but... Hey, hey, it's totally cool, man. We just have to work around it in the future. It's cool. I'm so sorry. I didn't know it would be triggering for you. Jesus. I, I, didn't, know it, I didn't know it either, so you don't have to say you're sorry. I don't really know it either until I'm in the middle of watching this. I'm, like, fucking, like, throwing things and, like, saying, you know, fuck this and fuck them and really getting into it, like, wanting people to die in really bad ways, like, really horrific ways. <laughs> I felt every bit of that, but not like throwing shit around. I was just really into the movie. So yeah. I totally understand where you're coming from. I can't believe it, but this is like a cinematic trauma for you now, basically. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think bowling movies kind of do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know, they deserve like fucking like whatever the worst deaths people have gone through in movies, they deserve that. <laughs> Wow, man, that's really powerful. <laughs> can we keep yeah. going? Yeah, yeah, we can. Um, <laughs> all right. So, anywho. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, the next day, she's uh, walking through school. And, of course, uh, pictures of her are being put up. And she rips them down. Um, we go to class, and the dude teacher's having to do fucking uh, anatomy classes and uh, sex ed with the girls. Which, that's kind of fucking weird. It's not his choice. It's just fucking weird they would let the one of the only male teachers in the whole entire fucking school do that. There is but a reason he is being paid to be there. Yeah, probably. And, and it's gross, and this is part of it. Yeah, yeah, probably. Sandra goes, what would possess like a person to take nude photos of themselves? And he said, well, I mean, it, there's a matter of reasons for anything. He goes, of course, it's also a matter if they were tricked into it or uh, drugged into it as well. 
So uh, they all leave class, but Jennifer talks to him, and he has one of the pictures that was put up. He took it down. He goes, do you want to tell me what's going on? And she goes, I'll handle it. Don't worry about it. And he goes, listen, it's this our pool. This is here at the school. I can only assume one of the girls did it. He goes, let me help you. He goes, I want to be your friend, not just your teacher. I want to help you. This is, he, he's like, this is wrong. And he goes, the person who ever did this to you is obviously a psychopath. He goes, because they have no feelings whatsoever. All this while, Sandra's listening from the outside of the door with Jane, trying to fucking hear what's being said, but they can't really exactly hear. Can I get a ruling here? Is the teacher yeah. being creepy here? No. I think he sees the way this school works. He's not dumb. He's not blind, and he and he doesn't want to shut his eyes to the rest of this. And he sees what's kind of going on. And now he has to see one of the good students in class is being horrifically bullied to the point where you, you, you know, this is somewhat of a, a, a definitely a, a sexual assault in some case. And he knows what she's going through and he wants to try to help. And he sees that she's trying to, you know, in his eye, she's shutting down. Like, I can't, you know, get away with anything. You know, I can't get any of the other girls in trouble. And he wants to help her. But no, so it's not creepy. He's just, he's wanting to help somebody who's in a, who's probably in a deep hole right now. Okay, so clearly my baggage is something to do with afros. Yeah, I think so. I think you got some problems with Mike Brady and shit. So. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll have to go to counseling and figure that out somehow. <laughs> but don't get me wrong. The afro is what doesn't help him. I sit there too and stared and tried to go, okay, I think he's being good. Afro or if he had slick back hair. It's one of those two and it's always going to make you sus. Always. <laughs> okay. I'm just glad that it wasn't just me. No, yeah, it's, it's not. Me, me sitting there too. I was like, eh, I don't know if you're being all right or not. And then the more he talked, I'm like, all right, he's just trying to help. But it's the hair. It doesn't help. That I'm also, the leisure suit, you know? Just, I'm, I'm also a much less trusting person than you. Yeah, yeah, but it's a leisure suit as well. We're, we 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 have a lot of stigma on leisure suits, and he's wearing one. So seventies <laughs> clothing in I, I general buy a leisure suit. <laughs> yeah, no seventies clothing in general. We're all sus about. So I'm sus seeing anybody dressed in seventies clothes. I'm like, <laughs> you're fucked up. So I need to get a leisure suit. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> And then, and then afro wigs, and then there you go. Oh, then I ain't shaving the beard though. I'm keeping it. No, yeah, yes, yeah. That's even better because <laughs> I'm not shaving my beard either. All right, so um, you know, you so, know, somebody out there is photoshopping that shit. Oh right yeah, now. that's that's gonna be good. Laser suits and fucking afros are coming up on the fucking psyop page. Yeah, yep, yeah. And and, and it will be us. Like, it will be like little voice boxes saying, "Don't worry, you can trust me, teenager. I'm here to help you. I want to be your friend." And you know, we're obviously stop! just too creepy, dude. Stop giving them fucking material. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, do the review. Well, you did help. <laughs> So anyway, um, Sandra, they're the, the listening in, and Jen walks out, and Sandra's like, "What were you saying to him?" Uh, we, you know, he's mine, and Jen's like, "No, you're, you know, he's, you're, you know, the teacher was right. You are crazy. You do need help." And and Sandra's like, "No, we're, we're you know, that's not what he says when we're sleeping together and all that." And Jane's Which like, is so you, clearly a childish, idiotic, narcissist lie. Crazy. Nah, it's a lie because even Jane goes, that's not true. He's married. And she's like, no, we're together. He's going to be mine. He goes, that's not true. Jane's like, that's just, you're making stuff up. You're overplaying it because that's not, nothing like that's happening. So Jen leaves and then Sandra gets pissed at Jane and says she's cut out officially. She's too much like Jen. You're out of here. So dun, dun, then dun. we cut. Yeah, right. Uh, then we cut back to Jen and her dad. And that is our next clip. Help me. Clean up the parakeet cage. What happened to the kitten? Oh, some gal. She came to see it, you know, from the school, and she bought it. Who was it? I don't know. I saved that kitten myself. You shouldn't have done it. I told you I needed the money. I never see any money. I work every night, every weekend. You give me nothing. You're forgetting who you are, Will. You better remember. You think I can ever forget? What about Bobby Lee? Well, that was an accident. It wasn't your fault. But he was only seven, Papa. Those rattlers bit him. 
He died right there on the floor in the middle of the whole congregation. I made it happen, Papa. And I couldn't save him. He was the preacher's son, and I couldn't save him, Papa. We did everything we could. We were run out of town. You lost the power, but you can get it back. I just know you can. I don't want it, Papa. It kills people. I don't want it. Mama didn't want it either. Your mama had the power, but not like you, Jenny. You turned your back on God. That's not God. That's evil. The power destroys evil. Y you gotta believe. It comes from the wind. It comes from the night. Take back the power, Jenny, and we can go home again. Please, Papa. I love you. Please understand, I love you. This is our home. The serpents do your bidding. You got the gift. Believe in the wind. Believe in the dark. Believe! Oh, shit. That's crazy in time. Yeah. Uh, well, the ladies there, ladies and the gents are all out for the night. They're back at their fucking parking lot structure hangout joint where they all like to just, you know, hang out and race cars. Anyway, they uh, head in, uh, they get into the elevator, but Drayton has Jane stay back and they get in the elevator by themselves. He says, you know, Sandra really wants you to, to uh, be more on her side and all that. And, you know, Jane's like, well, I am on her side. I just, you know, don't want to get caught doing some crazy stuff that she wants to do. He's like, ah, but I think you should. And then he starts kind of getting close to her. And she's like, hey, what are you doing? He goes, hey, I hear, you know, you're something special, all that. And then he gets real violent with her real quick. And, uh, yeah, Drayton rapes Jane. Thankfully, the movie cuts away. But yeah, it cuts it, away from it. But, yeah. It's heavily implied and then flat out basically shown that that is the case in the showing of the aftermath and the yeah. reaction that it's it's inferred in such a way. But, yes, the way that he gets violent with her is more than enough and out of the blue enough and enough of a quick tonal shift in the yeah. film to where if you had any doubt that Sandra was a fucking evil narcissistic psychopath... She ordered her boyfriend to rape that girl, and he does yeah. on command. And Drake knows it was an evil fuck. That's so, fucking gross. That was really yeah. hard to digest. No, this is but it's about to get worse though. It's about to get a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, it's enraging. Because as the all the you kids are begging race, for these people to die. <laughs> yeah, I'm right now. I want everyone to die. And now here, now it's about to get worse. So with the now the uh, uh, everyone's like hey where's jane where's jane and sandra's like ah who cares let's race and they start racing cars we cut to a very battered very torn up jane in a phone booth who calls her mom her mom admonishes her for calling her at nine in the fucking morning in paris it's not in the morning that's not even that early but your kid's calling you and needs help and the mom couldn't care less and that ends that 20 minutes with her mother not caring yeah, the call kind of ends with the girl just crying and, like, the mother even just kind of yeah. hangs up on her. It's she even says, like, heartbreaking. He hurt me, Mom. He hurt me. And, God damn, oh, I can't even think. It's only 9 in the morning. I can't think. And it's like, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Stop having children. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is what boarding schools are for, Matt, to grow up and bear the children that you don't want to rear yourself. Oh, it's gross. It's very fucking gross. <laughs> yeah, but when you can but, afford it, why not? Yeah. Uh, because this is what happens to your kids. Yeah, exactly. Jesus. <laughs> this horrible <laughs> shit because your kids turn into monsters and do this to their friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's the end of that 20 minutes and we're getting ready to go to the final 30 now. Yeah, I think I'm good and we can just let's wrap her up. All right. So then uh, Jen, uh, the next day, she heads to her locker and she opens it up. And there's the kitten hung there, dead. Now, how angry are you, sir? <laughs> um, the cat, I don't think, was really murdered. No, uh, of course not. No, but I, I think in the movie. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's horrific, and of course, these kids, I've already voted that, like, once the rape happened, everyone yeah. should be already on board, but this is just an outrage You're a lot better than me, because I was well before the rape happened. I was like, everyone should be dead right now. 
Okay, granted, I am much earlier on than that as well. I'm just saying that that's the demarcation yeah. point. Like, I should already be yeah. for these people to die. But this is horrific. And this just goes to show just how cruel Sandra is because she's doing this specifically just to hurt Jennifer. She gains nothing by this just yet. And then the way that she nope. uses it and manipulates it and twists it around is even more horrific. And I just like the evil that is Sandra is outrageous. Like, and oh, how yeah. far that, that she actually actually starts going and like once mm-hmm. she kills the cat like i'm beyond pissed and yet she still has more depths of depravity to mine yeah <laughs> like, yeah she's nowhere near fucking done she's the most sinister fucking teen villain i can think of now yeah she is the fucking worst and she even has the worst fucking the actress is the best fucking face for being a fucking teenage villain her fucking smile is one of fucking just horrendousness. Yeah, she's unnerving as shit when she glares and smiles. It's like that kid who played Joffrey, man. I'm telling you, that kid had the perfect face for being a fucking asshole. <laughs> but apparently nicest kid in the world. So, I mean, I mean, dude's a great guy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the review. That's good. That's good acting. So, uh... That night, Jen gets back into it with the snake. She calls out to God and starts talking to the snakes again. So, well, they've tripped Jen's trigger. She's fucking done. And uh, so are they. Uh, The next day, uh, Sandra actually pins the cat murder on Jen. Has the headmistress call Sandra's dad about it. And uh, they're both blaming Jen for it because the cat was in her locker. Why would someone hang a dead cat in their own fucking locker? Um, uh, so, because uh, psychopath. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, Sandra leaves the office and she tells all the other girls that, yeah, it was definitely Jen who killed her cat. She didn't even get to name it yet. We and Jen, Jen. They're like, well, we'll help you get her. Don't worry. So she pretty much did this to get everyone else, not just to hurt Jen, but to get everyone on her side. To do whatever she wanted to do to Jen. You know, make everyone go, yeah, yo, nope, I fuck it, I don't care now. We're with you now. Now we'll do whatever crazy plan you come up with, you fucking little sociopath. The two-step plan that she executes here is villainy at its finest. Because she hurts Jen specifically by having the cat be dead in her locker for her to see it first thing. But then immediately goes before Jen has a chance to say anything and reports Jen for killing her cat and then spins the story. So it's a two-step plan of just utter sheer brilliant villainry. You have to appreciate how fucking evil this chick is. I do, and I'm really going to appreciate her getting busted for it. (laughs) (laughs) No, like, I am so on Jennifer's side, but, like, as far as evil villainry goes, you have to say it. Yeah, you got to enjoy her Skeletor levels of fucking as, as, evil. As, as evil plans go, it doesn't suck. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, if if you if you are one to be prone to execute evil plans for your own means, you could see some yeah. justification in what she's doing yeah, for yeah. evil. Listen, this is goes be Skeletor sees this shit, and goes, "Wow, bitch, you're fucked up." So anyway, Jen then visits Jane, and that's our next clip. Did she make you kill the cat? No, I wouldn't. She did it herself. How could she do it? You promised me she wasn't planning anything that bad. None of them trust me anymore. Nobody believes me about dating. Is it poisonous? You're really with me now, Jane. Yes, I promise. Dayton is the one I want. Put your hand in the bag. Why? What are we doing? Sealing our bargain. Jennifer's a troublemaker. She'll have to go. How can you believe that she killed that cat? Doesn't matter who killed the cat. I think it does matter. Sandra's just trying to run her out of the school. That's not altogether a bad idea. The sooner she leaves, the better. Jennifer is a is a very special student. A wonderful girl. And I can't believe you'd rather hang on to somebody like Sandra. I tell you, I 
I'm sick to death of trying to teach these spaced out upper class rejects. They can barely cast their checks to pay off their pushers. Jeffrey, you've served a purpose here. Now, if you're not happy. Fire me? I'd be grateful. Your wish is granted, Jeffrey. You can leave Greenview at once. You know what's wrong with this school? It belongs to the age of the dinosaur and the dodo. When the reptiles take over the world, you can care for their young. <laughs> well, Froman is very over melodramatic. Yeah, well, fuck it. So Okay, um, in this scene he's not being creepy at all either. Yeah. No. Uh, okay, then I definitely have some kind of underlying issue with afros. I uh, probably. But it's all right. You know, afros or leisure suits can be either or. Um, it's something I need to work on, clearly. But you'll get it. It's all right. Um, trust me. I, I understand your distrust of this man. So, and we cut to Jen and Jane. They're working on some concoction. And um, just then the teacher walks in. He says, hey, you're here to show me off. And they're like, yeah. And she's like, oh, no, I had some work to do. And uh, the, the snake is in this bag. And it's kind of crawling up. But. The teacher doesn't notice, and um, the teacher's actually like, you should just leave this school. He goes, I'll find you a scholarship somewhere else. You may have to sacrifice a year. He goes, but you don't have to be here. You know, you, you're, you're, I, he thinks she, she's wasting her time there. And she's like, hey, you know, I have just things I have to finish here of work I have to do. You know, so it, it's fine. So uh, then we see Sandra. Well, she's all of a sudden talking to Jen's dad at the pet store saying how she's actually friends with Jen. She's uh, Her name's Abby or something from the swim team. And that they do this thing where they kidnap the girls in the middle of the night. And then, you know, they have fun and then take them out to breakfast in the morning. And you know, just leave the back door open. So the dad's like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Because, you know, uh. Uh, he does even bring up, he goes, now, what's your name? He goes, because I know some girls have been giving her trouble. And she goes, no, that's when she says a fake name. Um. He so, should not have done it anyway. He should have been awake no. to make sure. <laughs> At some point, uh, yeah, because, you know, they should have made sure, you know, uh, you know, hey, Jen, listen, <laughs> this is supposed to be a surprise for you, but. <laughs> yeah, he's a terrible father. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and he is a simpleton. And not only is he a simpleton, but he just relies on religion to to be his light in the world, uh, the Bible. And, yeah, like like you said, simpleton, right? Go on. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, at this point, then that we cut to the girls, and they're all kind of yelling at Jane to close a window, and Jane's like, "There's no reason to close the window. Who cares?" And they're like, "Close it!" And they like fucking bully her into closing it. Uh, one of the girls even says, "Maybe it's Drayton coming to get revenge on you for you know saying what you said." And it's like, wow, you people are fucking worse. Yeah, they are fucking terrible. These girls are awful. I want them dead now. Bad. Yeah, so a whole line of cars pull up and all these people get into like ski masks and shit. They break into Jen's house. Well, they break in. They walk in, but they kidnap Jen and throw her to the trunk of a car. As they're driving, Jane says she doesn't want any more part of this. And Sandy actually threatens her. Um, but then Jane gets Sandra to admit that she put Drayton up to raping her, saying that she needed to be taught a lesson. And, yeah, I just grab the wheel of the car and crash it. Um, but uh, Jen's in the trunk remembering her father's words. And they race up to the top of that fucking parking garage. They take Jen out, throw her down to the ground, and then they start racing the cars around her. And, uh, you know, thinking that eventually one of them would hit her. And they're then she, zooming past her closer and closer, playing a game yeah. of sort of chicken to see if they're going to hit her or not. Yeah. Well, then she calls the snakes and the snakes just show up by all just tons of them. They're biting people, choking people. All of a sudden, this giant fucking snake shows up and bites the head off of Drayton. And we see his body fall off the parking garage. Sandy freaks out. All these kids who are all assholes are all bleeding and screaming and crying, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> By the time the Sandy, giant snake bites that dude's head off. Yeah. 
I am rolling with laughter and oh, yeah. so fucking happy with Glee that it goes that far insane that I do not regret buying this Blu-ray at all. <laughs> no, and I am I'm right now happy. Yeah. I am so happy. <laughs> this goes so Rampage. This goes so batshit crazy, but it's been building up this tension for so long and you have so much anger that by the yeah. time the giant snake bites the dude's head off, you're actually like, fuck yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that snake. I hate it. <laughs> fuck that motherfucker. Get him. Fuck him. Fuck them. Get him, snake. I'm rooting for Slytherin at this point. So <laughs> Right, like it's just, um, it's so fucking intense all the way yeah. up to this point that you're like, you know what, I'll take whatever catharsis I can get now, thank you. Well, Sandy's noticeably freaked, so she gets in her car and tries to drive away, while well, Big Snape's in her back seat, starts biting her head, attacking her, and as the two guys who are talking about watching kids die and not caring, who run the parking garage, look, the her car, she gets in a wreck, her car explodes, and Sandy fucking dies, and no one, I repeat, no one mourned. So I'm more concerned to the snake get out of the car before it exploded. Me too. I'm I'm hoping somehow the Kate the snake has magical abilities to get out of fucking car wrecks. I think <laughs> that's that snake may be a snake of Christ, like a uh, executioner yeah. or a demon under sway or something meant well, that, to punish that, the wicked. That makes me happy then. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's clearly the, the type of snake that hellfire of a car exploding will not bother. And by the way, every single effect in this is so fucking gory. We haven't mentioned that, but like yeah. you see snake bites where you see flesh being torn away and blood torn away oh and it's good stuff yeah it's yeah. brutal and it is very what? fucking cathartic at first i'm sitting there like did he bite drayton's head off and then yeah sure enough you see the head in the snake's mouth and i'm like that's fucking great i don't even <laughs> care i can tell you gotta tell that's a mannequin who gives a shit that looks awesome <laughs> <laughs> right this film definitely rewards you for your patience yes yes it's like hey we know what we did to you for the you know, hour and 15 minutes. Have some good time. <laughs> here's a giant snake biting a dude's head off. Hope it helps. Yeah. Here's a giant snake biting a rapist's head off. Have a good time. So, Jen then meets with the headmistress, and that's our final clip. I don't care what the police say. I know you're involved in all this. In what way, Mrs. Cowling? I want you to listen to me. Six of our girls are lying in the hospital with a mysterious respiratory virus. They're struggling for breath. Dayton Powell is dead and no one knows why. But most dreadful of all, Sandra was killed in that horrible fashion. Not even the people that were there can explain it. The police think it was drugs. May I go now? Go? Oh, you thrown out of this school, I would. I'm afraid the police have upset you. You want me to get you something? You think you're going to get away with this? Well, I'm going to prove you cost it all. I have a duty to Senator Tremaine. I have a duty to all the parents who thought their girls were safe here. May I go? Why did they take you with them? Everybody loathed you. Especially Sandra. Why did she take you in the car with her? Why? Tammy told you everything. Tammy told me nothing. She didn't remember anything. Nobody remembered anything. So I understand. I'm sorry you seem so upset. Just remember. I'm going to keep my eye on you. You and Jane both. You may go now. Jesus fucking Christ, victim blaming fucking awful, horrible human being. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's pretty bad. She's bad at everything. I mean, she's not wrong to suspect her for getting rid of those students, but like she's but so wrong those for students deserve to die. She's totally blaming her for everything that those students did to her and like is pissed yeah. that she did anything in retribution, even though that the students are all dying and they can't prove that she did it. She still suspects her. Yeah. <laughs> she says such exactly. horrible, horrible shit. Yeah, pretty much. Um so anyway, the headmistress goes to get a pill because she's addicted to pills course and as she opens the drawer a snake bites her we hear a scream as jen and jane walk away smiling and laughing roll credits -E 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 
Uh, all right. Now we're seeing that Jennifer is kind of becoming the new Sandra, where she's taking out anybody who opposes her. Well, but we'll wait and see about that. Ah, uh, yeah, this headmistress, the thing that she said to her there and the way that she's been treating and the victim blaming yeah. all along, she does also have to go. <laughs> but I think it's also they just wanted to do one last snake bite attack or something, you know? Probably. One, and also one last death just to show that Jennifer is not done so yeah. that they could set it up for a possible sequel. Possibly, but I'm just happy that, you know, I got to see these ladies uh, who were very mean and a rapist dude all get fucking, you know, just murdered and it was grand. Were their deaths brutal enough considering that they were probably feeling the effects of venom poisoning? Well, yeah, and, and then the ones who lived are all gasping for air and stuff. So, yeah, it's... It's all pretty good. I mean, <laughs> if this pandemic has taught us anything, gasping for air is not the way you want to go. Ouch. Being on ventilators is not the way you want to have your life happen. Well, these people deserved it. <laughs> wow. That's really, really dark. Do you have the, any other the feelings? In the movie. Do you have any other feelings you need to share that are coming up triggered to you by a film that is a Carrie ripoff made in 1978? <laughs> no, I'm all right. <laughs> What's Carrie made? 1976 is when it was released. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. All right. The effects are amazing. The snake bites are amazing. The snake bite attacks are awesome. And they make it seem like it's a supernatural origin where she can even summon these snakes forth. I don't know if she has the ability um, to do this with the power of her mind where she can summon snakes from like hell or if they really truly are the snakes of Christ. Like there's some kind of like um, void of serpents that you can call up in the name of Christ yeah. <laughs> or, or what that's supposed to represent. But all I know is that by the time we should be having the heavy church organ hitting where it's like, Dah! you know, and the ground splits open where the fires of hell are coming for these fucking awful yeah. sinners. Like when that moment is supposed to happen where this like Christ Avenger is supposed to take these people, the fucking snakes just pouring in and then like this weird mist thing. I'm like, wait, she's Christ powered. Why are there serpents? Oh, right. Let's just watch. <laughs> and then like... Well, they they start doing the attacks and they just keep getting more and more brutal. And like by the time the guy gets his head bit off, I am more than satisfied with my purchase and so happy that this film exists. You know, it's really funny. You know, we talk about the carry thing. Also, earlier in the movie, Sandra claims that she turned down John Travolta. Right. Yeah. And it was made after Carrie. So there is that. Yeah. Uh yeah, and I, I really wanted to get mad because I'd be like, yeah, well, now you know she's lying. No, how we know John Travolta these days. Uh, you know that she was lying. <laughs> John Travolta never hit on her. <laughs> wow. Okay, Matt. Um, Weird flex, bro. Well, you're weird flex, bro. <laughs> Don't stick up for the bullies. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I'm not sticking you're up for the You're better than that. <laughs> I'm not sticking up for a bully. I just felt weird about the way you went about that one. Well, I don't give a shit, all right? I'm in I'm in the middle of a fucking rampage over here. <laughs> I can feel that, man. This film has made you feel too many fucking feelings, but It did. It really I, did. It I need to, really I need to fucking get, did. I need to get out some of my feelings now about the film. That's how all this right, show all works. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Motherfucker. It's making for a great show. I'm so sorry it upset you this much, but I do need to <laughs> no. talk about it a little bit more without you getting really upset. All right, all right, all right, all right. go ahead. My bad. <laughs> Oh, my fucking head hurts, man, from laughing. <laughs> okay. Once we see the head get snapped off and that, that snake takes the head away and I'm totally in, the film then continues to give me more and more gruesome deaths and the attacks tend to get worse and worse. And we're seeing people get bitten by a ton of different snakes. And they actually, even though there's no reason for uh, pythons to be there, the pythons attack like a python is supposed to attack. So they at least like paid attention to the type of attack the snake would do and had them do it so they tried to make it at least a little realistic even though it's all filmed very surreal and this is the most like warped view uh, of everything in the sequence when all the bullies are being attacked it's just a really great way to kind of end it and i don't think they needed the coda at the end with the teacher talking bad i think they just did that because carrie did the same thing where the girl had the dream of visiting carrie's grave that was actually her front yard that will saw a for sale sign that was her grave marker and then yeah. carrie's hand reaches out and grabs her throat like i think well, yeah. I think this moment is the principal uh, headmistress lady assaulting her verbally and then dying by snake bite. I think it's that same kind of like final jump they tried to do. Maybe. Yeah. 
But they totally didn't need it. Like, if you would have just had it end with all of the students dead. <laughs> that would have been nice. Yeah, we would have all been super satisfied. Like, assholes dead, movie over. Take the hint from Hammer Films. Yeah, right. Jesus Christ. But beautiful. The- the code is fine. I just didn't need it. And uh, overall, I fucking really enjoyed the film. I am so sorry that bully films trigger you, Matt. I'll try and be more careful in the future and not throw more at you. At it's, least without I mean, a it's all right. I mean, it's entertaining as shit. Just prepare me next time. And, and it's not your fault either because I didn't even know that's how it would do it to me. But oof. Jesus. I will tell you that the way that they portray bullying in this movie is so realistic that yeah. I am not shocked that you found it to be somewhat triggering at all. It, um, it was real bad. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. I can see that um, it had me for a couple of moments where I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, it gets intense. Um, And I was not expecting that at all out of this film. And I was pleasantly surprised. Jennifer is so much more than just being a Carrie ripoff while being exactly a Carrie ripoff. Yeah, right. Exactly. (laughs) It's impressive that it lives in two states simultaneously. Uh, (laughs) In a constant flux. (laughs) You know, and I think we're just going to have to fucking end it right there, right? Like, I think so, man. Yeah. Jesus. I'm exhausted. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. to the pirate radio edit you are currently listening to snake bite love and we're just cutting in right here right now that is from fucking motorhead and if you're not you are listening to this on the main feed then you are currently hearing uh some more of that 70s style disco type song that was from our royalty free available site yes Oh man, I don't know. I think the I think the Motorhead was working for me to bring me out of the show, but I hope that uh, I am providing something in the disco music I chose for everybody to enjoy on the main feed. <laughs> I'll tell I'm you a- one thing, man. I am a uh, I'm gonna sleep well tonight. <laughs> I went through this movie and then doing the review, man. I'm uh I'm emotionally gone. I think you've worked through some stuff. I think we have actually worked through some things with you. Where uh, yeah, I definitely probably worked through a few things that I've been holding on to for 30, 30 some odd years now. 
Yeah, we sneaky had a uh, bring your own cinematic drama episode here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, if we ever do Carrie, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or something even more bullying rated. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, something. I don't know, man. If you'd like to yeah. see if the previous 314 instances of our episodes may contain some kind of trigger for Matt, included bullying, that's available at legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. That is all previous 314 episodes of the show available there we are also available on instagram with our meme repository which is still holding strong yet winding down the people need to develop memes and donate to the cause (laughs) yes Come on, they're not just your memes, they're our memes. <laughs> There's also our Facebook group where you can check out the memes that I am posting there. Cinema PsyOps on Facebook groups, which is the name of the show, so that shouldn't be too hard. I'm available on <laughs> I mean, Facebook. Go ahead. You would think, it seems pretty easy. I'm available on Facebook also as Court PsyOps and as a sardonic asshole on there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Matt is also uh, present in a form on Facebook with which you can tag him as I'm Matt planning Sion. on now getting more involved in what's uh, going on out there in the World Wide Web's. If you'd like, things are kind of evening out for me. If you'd like a to, more. if you'd like to test that theory with Matt, you can email feedback to Matt, Matt at gmail.com and then run a clock on how long it takes him to respond. Maybe I'm just trying to get a fresh clock out of this. <laughs> <laughs> you can email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com and let him know not to fall for Matt's tricks. He just wants another clock running for a gag. <laughs> That's just a gag. I mean, how dare you? Just a gag. How dare... Yeah, it's just... <laughs> you can twit a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the hate-filled shitfest reformed into a porn bot haven known as Twitter. I am at court underscore psyop there, and he is at psyop man. <laughs> you had nothing on that. Thanks. That, that really I had helps. nothing on that one. I'm just fucking... I, I told you, man, I worked through some shit. <laughs> like, I had nothing left on that one. I'm like, uh... Yeah... Twitter porn. Well, while you're out there also working through some shit, folks, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. I come to you from a very empty bunker. Oh, yeah. You you clean the place out, so you're going to be extra echoey. Yeah. (laughs) It is what it is. Start recording on your side. And I am recording now. One, two, three. All right. Waveform looks good. All right. And can you hear? I hate that. I sure can. Who in the fuck took my paper clips? I don't know, man, but I ask questions. Who is that guy? I don't know, but whoever you want, you stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm determined to have your brain. Nobody wants it. <laughs> all right, your waveform looks good. You heard all of yep. that just fine. Yep. But I powered back this, uh, 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 the basement carpet looks like new. Man, that thing, that thing was rough looking. Did you use like a, uh, a one of those, uh, water vacuum things where it, yep. it shoots the water down in and then, yeah. Yeah, it was soap. Yep. Yeah, and the antibacterial stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got, I rented it like 70 bucks for 48 hours. Wow. Did the stairs too. So, but yeah, it's per, I mean, the carpet even feels different to walk up. Like it's brand new. It's really fucking, it was worth it. Sometimes they have 
have an additive in those things that will bond with the carpet like shit that they put in your hair for conditioner. Uh-huh. And it makes the carpet, you know, kind of revitalize yeah. a little bit. I used to work on those things. I used to fucking fix those, the carpet cleaners like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> it was one of my ah. very earliest jobs. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, yeah, I love the thing. Uh, I mean, I have so many stains and black marks from people wearing shoes down here. Uh, had to fucking, I thought some of that black water that came out of there should do an exorcism for. <laughs> you know, you're recording like all of this, right? I know. Well, I mean, I don't mind talking about the basement, you know, the, the, the bunker. I don't mind it. <laughs> same, same, same. Same, same. <laughs> Do you mind if we get the episode started over an hour late? Oh, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, let's get moving, then, dude. <laughs> I'm ashamed to admit that I know that movie as well as I do, but um, I hate the fact that I get so much enjoyment out of old Mel Gibson movies still, but I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, because of Mel. <laughs> right. But it's all, but it also has Goldie Hawn, so somehow that balances out in my estimation. It really should, because Goldie Hawn's a pretty good person, right? I, I You would hope, but, you know, who knows? Yeah. We're always finding out horrible things about rich people that I just don't want to believe. I mean, I don't want to believe it, but for some reason, I, I think it's all true all the time. <laughs> okay, Fox Mulder, let's do the review. Yeah, I'm going all over the place like fucking uh, Dennis Miller on the NFL and why they had to fire him because he was making references that were too broad and uh, intellectual for the audience. I'll tell you the God is honest truth. He was actually pretty good. Uh, and the audience, general audiences, actually did not mind him. What happened was... Um, his cohorts tried to get in on the action, or at least the color commentator, and it that's where it didn't work. And instead of firing the color commentator, they Dennis Miller just quit. So fuck it, I guess. Um, For more interesting sports uh, discussion and or finding out how backstabbing sports commentating can be, I highly recommend Eastbound and Down, the whole entire series. Have at it. Oh, oh yeah, man, that's a that's a good series. Anyway, that night, Jen dreams of that, uh, of uh, the night of, you know, or the, the, oh, hold on. That night, Jen dreams <laughs> wait, 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 of her wait, wait, dad's wait, wait, words. Wait, 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 okay. Oh, I fell apart on that one. <laughs> right, and then you gave me the giggle fits doing it, God damn it. <laughs> I haven't gotten the giggle fits in fucking forever. <laughs> I'm like, what do you want from me? But every I'm time sorry. you fucking, okay, every time you fucking talk or get accusatory towards me, I'm just gonna laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, okay, I lost it on that one. All right, I apologize. No, it's fine. Um, be, yeah, but I fucking lost it too. So, okay, let's. I'm good. <laughs> if you if you go now, I can probably keep my shit together. All right. One thing to understand, Sandra's definitely a sociopath, and one thing all sociopaths do, they lie. Lies of grandeur to other people to make themselves bigger. I have never had to do that in my entire life, you halfwit. <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> Me demonstrating what you were trying to do. I know. <laughs> How dare you? I'm a full wit. At least 75% of the wit. I mean... Not according to our new theme intro. <laughs> We're both broken halfwits. That is true. We're both supposed to be broken halfwits. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, I guess, listen, who am I to argue with the fucking intro? That's that's just terrible. Yeah, who am um, I to argue with something I wrote? Yeah, right? If you were in the situation where you were able to see this as a teenage boy and it's age appropriate for you or something. Oh, like yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Okay. You'd be totally fine with it. And in that context, you can say thank you, movie, because they're actresses yeah. that are, in fact, of appropriate well age. Of age. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're well within age. But I'm and just, and, you know, if, okay. and if they're not, then this film should not be on the market. <laughs> then we should not have watched this. We both committed a crime, and this show will never be released. But not but, but not knowingly, obviously. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, not knowingly, but they Fucking the law doesn't care about knowingly. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. <laughs> That's not what one of my lawyers said. <laughs> Which lawyer? <laughs> this is like two minutes. I'm going to run upstairs and grab a drink. Cool. I don't take pills. Booyah, bitch. Back before it's over. Star. Booyah. Booyah. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a drink. <laughs> you got two minutes. <laughs> and you beat the clock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. Seen such worship, I got to, like, 
work my way around cats and my wife who's Power. making herself her lunches mean, uh, in the kitchen some kind for the of next energy. part of the week. Yes. I almost came out of my slippers and fell down the, the stairs. <laughs> Jesus, you injured yourself enough trying to get down those stairs. Take it slow. I know, right? <laughs> you kidding. <laughs> Jennifer, who would believe that? The hill people believe it because they oh, see so it. So don't ever run in slippers, let alone running oh, in no. slippers downstairs, Bob. Right, right, yeah. I was <laughs> trying to prove a fucking point. Power. Take that shit off and then run. Yeah, right. It's it cold down here. Yeah, and then you put sometimes them back on. That's what I always do. Yes, you think I'm trying to fucking die. run up the fucking steps in my Godzilla God. slippers? I'll fucking die. <laughs> God meant to take them. I take that bitches off, run up the stairs, put them back on, and then go. It's true. Didn't you say you got trained by some famous swimmer? Because Sandra, of course, over lies about fucking everything. Sometimes it's a compulsion and you can't help it, all right? <laughs> why? Why? I mean, you sound like you know a lot about it. No particular reason that I'm going to admit. Well, while you're out there also working through some shit, folks, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. I'll make that work somehow. <laughs> so somehow, yeah, it'll work. It'll work. All right, I have stopped recording. Okay, good, because I have to leak.